Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video number 16 and in this one we're going to be concentrating on the alkanols. So in this video we're going to be investigating the structural formula, the properties and the functional group for the three different types of alcohols, the primary alcohols, the secondary alcohols and tertiary. So we make sure we can identify the three different types and also have a little bit of a look at their properties and their structural formulae. So the first one that we want to look at are the primary alcohols. The important thing about the primary alcohols of course is the uh, functional group, the hydroxyl group is on an end carbon. So here is a nice simple example of a primary alcohol. This has two carbons, so therefore it's eth. And the hydroxyl group coming off the end carbon um, is the um, functional group that enables us to classify this compound as a member of the alkanols. So that's its homologous series. It's an alkanol. It's a specifically ethanol and it has the hydroxyl OH functional group. So if we were to draw the structural formula for ethanol, it would look like this. It may well be that you, instead of putting the OH uh, as a functional group together, you might even find it's more important for you to link the oxygen and the hydrogen by the bond that's actually there. This just reduces any um, suggestion that maybe you're not sure about what the structural formula should be. So this gives you all of the bonds. We can see all of the bonds within this molecule. And that's also going to be important uh, when we start to analyze things like the properties of the alcohols. You can see that the hydroxyl group is actually attached to the end carbon. In the case of ethanol, there are only two carbons, so obviously there's one on each end. So we can only have primary alcohols which have uh, two carbons in them. Now one of the important things about the properties, and we will look at these in a little bit more detail later on, is that the chemical properties are now related to the fact that we have a hydroxyl functional group. We still have a large number of carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. So that's also going to be fairly important when they are broken down in chemical reactions. But the fact that we now have a hydroxyl functional group is going to slightly change the way some of these compounds behave chemically. More importantly, the functional group is also going to affect the physical properties of this particular group of compounds. And the main reason for that is that there's a carbon, oxygen, hydrogen bond. In this particular sequence, the oxygen is very electronegative, making both the carbon and the um, hydrogen slightly positive. And that means that we have polarity. And this polarity in the covalent bonds is very important when we start to look at properties like melting point and boiling point and solubility in aqueous solutions, solubility in aqueous solutions, because that polar bond is going to do things or at least behave in certain ways that are very different to the non-polar covalent bonds that exist between carbon and carbon and carbon and hydrogen. And they're the ones that dominate the hydrocarbon groups that we've looked at previously, the alkanes, the alkenes, and the alkynes. So this presence of polar bonds and therefore the generation of dipole-dipole interactions or the specific type of dipole-dipole interactions that involve hydrogen, which we've called hydrogen bonding, uh, is going to be very important when we look at some of the properties a little bit later. In very simple terms, if you were trying to equate something like the melting and boiling point for equivalent um, chain length compounds. So that is if you were to compare ethanol with ethane or ethene or ethine as ones that we've looked at previously, you would find that the boiling points of these alcohols are much higher. And we can explain that on the basis of that polar bond. 
just think about the fact that at room temperature, ethanol is a liquid, but ethane, ethene, and ethyne are all gases. Likewise, ethanol is soluble in water, but none of the hydrocarbons that we looked at were. This polarity is going to be very important when we analyze some of the important properties associated with alcohols in later videos. An example of a secondary alcohol would be something like propentuol. So we said we can't have a uh, secondary alcohol for ethanol because there are only end carbons. And one of the important features of secondary alcohols is that the carbon to which the hydroxyl group is attached is also attached to two other carbons. These two other carbons are what makes this particular structure a secondary alcohol. It means that there's still going to be some effects of polarity. So when we start looking at properties like melting point and boiling point, that polarity that's occurring in the middle of the molecule is also going to interact with other molecules. And again, it's going to raise the boiling point of each of these. But of course, we will have to look at some of the trends uh, when we start to look at differences in the uh, boiling point and melting point trends between the different types of alcohols. But for now, again, looking at comparable uh, alcohols with their um, corresponding alkane, alkene, alkyne, we can find that, that the presence of that polar bond, the polar covalent bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen is going to create polarity and that will interact with other molecules that are similar. As we've said before, that affects things like solubility in aqueous solutions. And so these sorts of compounds are often soluble or at least miscible in water. This particular molecule would be named propan 2 ol indicating that the functional group, the hydroxyl group, is located on the second carbon in this particular case. The fact that it's on the second carbon and there's a carbon either side of that carbon is what gives us, gives us that characteristic of secondary alcohols. What would this look like? Well, you can see here's a model of propentuol. If the functional group was on the end carbon, and therefore we would name this propanuol, then being on an end carbon would make it a primary alcohol. And we have one, two, three carbons, which is why it's propanol. And so therefore propanuol telling us that the OH group is on an end carbon. But for a secondary alcohol, the hydroxyl group is located on a central carbon or one at least that is not on the uh, end, not a terminal carbon. So therefore we have uh, our OH group attached to a carbon, which is also attached to one, two, other carbons. The fact that it's attached to these other carbons is what makes it a secondary alcohol. So this is what it looks like when we build a little model and also what it looks like when we draw the structural formulae. But what about the tertiary alcohols? So tertiary alcohols are structures which have the characteristic hydroxyl group, so the OH group is present again, but this time the carbon to which the hydroxyl group is attached is also attached to one, two, three other carbons. So you can see that the OH group is actually kind of sitting in the middle of this little nest of carbon atoms. So that that carbon to which the OH group is attached is not actually attached to any hydrogens at all, all three of the other bonds available for that carbon are all attached to other carbons. So how would we draw this? The central carbon is attached to an OH group, but it's also attached to a methyl group. And that carbon itself is also attached to two other carbons, which themselves are attached to hydrogens. Uh, in all other directions. <laughs> 
So you can see this is the model. This is the structural formula for the model that I have looked at. If I circle again the central carbon, the carbon to which the hydroxyl group is attached, then I can see that that carbon is attached to one, two, three other carbons. And because it's attached to three other carbons, that's why it qualifies as a tertiary alcohol. But that numbering system doesn't help us name this compound. In fact, when we look at the longest chain, the longest chain has three carbons, so therefore it's prop. The OH group is going to give us that name propanol. But we also have a group here, which is a methyl group, and it's coming off the main chain. So therefore, we have to add methyl to our name. And while the methyl group itself can't be attached anywhere else, if it was attached to one of the other carbons, it would actually just increase the length of the longest chain. The OH group certainly can. And so therefore we have to locate the particular number, which in this case would be two. So hence the name of this compound would be methyl propan 2 -ol. And therefore, you should be able to draw that structure. And this is a structure of a tertiary alcohol. Once again, it's the polar bonding in alcohols that is responsible for things like increases in the melting and boiling points. But one other interesting thing is happening as we look at these primary secondary and tertiary alcohols. And that is that there's some change in reactivity. And this change in reactivity is most noted when we look at the tertiary alcohols. Because the change in reactivity comes from looking at uh, oxygen attached to an end carbon, an oxygen attached to a central carbon, and then an oxygen attached to a carbon which is attached to three other carbons. One important reaction that we're going to be looking at is the uh, reaction which is known as oxidation. And we've looked at oxidation as part of our redox couples in the past. And it's the same sort of process, but it's just a different way in which oxidation occurs for us to look at how some of these organic compounds can be um, reacted in order to change the functional group for each of these. One of the interesting things that we notice and we'll explore a little bit later in this particular series is the fact that if the OH group is off an end carbon, so a primary alcohol, then we can oxidize that uh, uh, up to three different types of products. We can produce an alkanal, we can produce an alkanoic acid, and even in the case of methanol, we can produce carbon dioxide and water. However, if it's a secondary alcohol, then that means that the oxygen attaching to as part of that hydroxyl group is on a central carbon. We can't form a, um, a double bonded oxygen off an end carbon in that case. So this one will produce things like alkanones or ketones when we oxidize them. I'll just put oxidation there so we know what we're talking about. Um, so this can produce an uh, alkanal or an acid. This one can produce a ketone and this one, the tertiary alcohol, uh, will not uh, be oxidizable at all. It can't be oxidized because the central carbon already has four bonds attached to it, three to carbons and one to an oxygen. So it can't double bond to the oxygen because that would give it five bonds and that's one of the things we're trying to avoid for our carbons. We will be looking at the chemical reactivity and comparing that across the different alcohol groups as we go further into this section of organic chemistry. But this is just a bit of an introduction of the three different types of alcohols, how you would go about classifying them, and some of the consequences of the addition of that OH functional group to the uh, physical and chemical properties of each of these alcohols. Thanks for watching.